Hey everyone, so this is the first video for the rest of the semester. This is the lab number 9 slash 10, the odometer lab. Um, this lab is going to be due April 16th, I believe. Um, kind of weird now that we're all online, so I'm just going to make these videos for the next three labs, and then you guys can watch them. And luckily, the labs don't require that much um, actual lab work. Um, the last lab, which is the um, which is the sand cone lab, we would normally do outside, but we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to give you guys values for that and have you guys kind of run through the calculations. Um, I already uploaded a bunch of stuff to D2L um, for that lab, and I will upload these videos and have you guys do all the work for them. Um, I know this is going to be kind of difficult all online and stuff, but we're also going to have you guys submit everything online. So your homeworks and your lab reports will all be due online. So whether you want to show all your work in Microsoft Word, that's fine with me. Um, I know that's sometimes easier to do that. Um, or if you want to still just write it out um, and then scan it, that's also fine. If you do it on Microsoft Word, just be sure to show like all the steps that you would um, as if you were writing it out. So yeah, um, let's see. So everything will be doing this assignment folder. If you're having problems with it, shoot me an email or shoot me a text um, and I'll figure it out. I've never done it online before like this. So um, yeah, kind of a learning curve for all of us. Um, so if you recognize this website, this is D2L. Um, if you go to content, then you will see that I have added a bunch of stuff. Um, and if you go to odometer test, click down here, lab number nine slash number 10, we'll bring you back. Um, so this is all the stuff that you're gonna need for this test. So we have our Excel spreadsheet, um, a couple different helpful PDF documents. So Cassegrande and Taylor method help, um, a little explanation of the lab. This information is just the um, lab manual kind of, and then these are my notes, which are gonna be very useful. So as you can see, I've listed the due date is April, April 16th, 2020 by 5 p.m. in the assignment folder on D2L. Um, if you have problems, email me or call me. Um, please don't just text me random things. Um, try to be professional about it. So, um, yeah, so everything should be on D2L. I'll upload this video and it will be in this folder as well. So, um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, since you guys aren't in lab, I'm just going to tell you a joke and hopefully I get one chuckle out of it. Um, what did the mermaid wear to her math class? Anyone? Just kidding, you guys can't respond. An algae bra. Get it? Okay, yeah, I like that one too. I thought it was funny. Anyway, okay, so odometer slash consolidation is basically the name of the game for this lab. So consolidation is, let's see here. Let me just organize a few things, sorry. Um, so consolidation is basically, this is the apparatus that we're dealing with here. So we have our soil sample and what we do is we take our soil sample, we isolate it, we put these permeable plates around it. And what we do is we apply a load onto our soil to see how it will react. And what we do is we're trying to build these different, those consolidation graphs, right? So something that kind of looks like, like this, right? You guys have all seen this before, where you're loading your soil and then you unload it and then you reload it and you have this nice relationship between stress and strain. And we can also see the relationship between void ratio and stress. Um, and we can figure out a lot of different things from this, like our C sub C values, our C sub C values, our C sub R values, stuff like that. 
um, and our pre-consolidation pressure. So the whole goal of this lab is to build something like this with a set of data that we receive from our apparatus. So this is kind of what is going on in the lab. So this is actually, this picture isn't taken from the graduate lab, but we have a very similar setup in the graduate lab. So what this machine does is it loads the soil and then it records all the data on this computer and then it unloads it and reloads it and we can take all those measurements and kind of do all the calculations from there. Um, so, hold on, sorry. So as you can see, um, on these are the notes on D2L. So the data that we're given is we have our time, we know how much load is being applied to our soil, and the machine also measures our deformation, which is the DC, DT. So from this, we calculate our time, um, we calculate the square root of our time, external load cell, our deformation, and then we can figure out our different plots from there. So basically what you guys are given is, we're, since we're not running this data ourselves, we are just given a bunch of data. Um, and so this is, the, um, this is the Excel spreadsheet that you guys are given online. And so what the computer spits out is this data tab. So it has all these different steps of these different pressures that it's applying. So step one, it's trying to apply 100 pounds per square foot. Um, and then step two, 156. Step three, 313. As you can see, it goes up and up and up, um, keeps going up. And then it unloads. So it unloads it, unloads it, and then reapplies that load until we get a sufficient amount of data. So this machine is for, it records it for about 15 steps. Um, and so, as you can see, we have all these different step tabs down here. Steps two through 15 is what you guys need to fill out. Um, so step one has been done for you. So basically what we're trying to do is build this graph of our deformation versus time, um, as well as our deformation versus square root of time. And I'll kind of explain that here in a minute. Um, so basically, you copy this data from step one. So you're just going to highlight this. You're going to copy it. And then you go over to step one. And then you paste that information right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to fill in this information. So time, square root of time, external load cell deformation. So the time is kind of weird since it's just given in a date. So that's why on the notes here, um, that's why on the notes here we have this time equation. So current time minus start time times 86,400 seconds in a day. Um, so as you can see here, so we have our start time minus our normal time. So for this time step, it's two seconds. And so it steps up about I don't know, a certain amount of time each time. Um, so as you can see, that kind of just goes down. Um, if you guys are good with Excel, then this is going to be pretty easy because you're just going to literally um, pretty much follow that equation. And to absolute reference something, um, I hope everyone knows how to do that, but if you don't, what you do is in, on a Mac, you can hit Command T, but the main goal is to just um, kind of surround your letter with dollar signs, and that locks in that value, so it'll always reference the A3. So even all the way down here, it'll reference A3. So say we wanted to redo this, and we can just do this time minus, or that time we hit Command T, and it will do that for us times 86400. And maybe we put some parentheses around there just to make sure it's all good to go. And then we can drag this down for as long as we want. And as you can see, the numbers kind of line up pretty well. So 
that's kind of just a little quick tutorial on absolute referencing. Um, square root of time, you just take the square root of that. The square root is just a function in there. Um, should be pretty easy. External load cell, so this is where it kind of gets tricky. So as you can see, there's lots of references in here. Um, but if you look at this, it just says data, um, exclamation point. So that's just saying that it's referencing B18 in the data tab, but it's also absolute reference. So be sure to include those dollar signs times B16. And so these, and there's a lot more that goes on to that. So the equation for that is right here. So external load cell, you have external load cell minus zero for external load cell. That zeroes it times the external load cell calibration factor divided by external load excitation and then divided by the area and then times 144 to get the units right. So um, that zero cell, um, a lot of that information is just going to be right here. So it's going to be just absolute reference. So it's going to be the same for every step. So your calibration factor, your excitation, your zero. Um, and so, and same with your min reading and your max reading. Um, I'm not sure you actually need those, but you definitely need these three for that equation. So if we go back to our step one, um, so now we have this external load cell and we see that we're just absolute referencing a lot of stuff and then we're just doing the B3, the external load cell. So that's pretty much the only thing we're referencing in this document or in this tab, I guess. And then to get our deformation, um, we pretty much just follow the same steps. So you have this equation here. Um, if you guys want to pause it and kind of write that down, you guys are welcome to do that. That's what I would do if I were you. Um, so that deformation um, is just how much it's squished down from the original height. So we have our deformation minus our DCT zero times our calibration factor over our excitation. So back on the data tab, um, that's just going to be, see, we have our external load cell on our deformation. So these kind of, this column refers to our deformation and this column refers to our external load cell. Um, and so back to step one, now we have these graphs, right? So we want to graph these. Um, so we're going to graph our deformation versus time. So just this column versus that column. And then we're also going to graph our square root of time versus our deformation. So the reason that we're graphing it twice is because we're going to um, analyze these two different ways to find our CV values. And in order to find our CV values, we're going to use the Casagrande method and the Taylor method. And each of them kind of use a different graph. So that's why we're graphing it twice. Um, so... As you guys will notice, um, the last thing that is going to be included on this tab is um, you have your, what your, so the machine, um, when the machine is applying a load, it doesn't normally apply the load exactly what we want it to be. So we set it up to um, apply these different loads. And so we're trying to get it to about 100 but the average external load cell that it's applying is just an average of these values here. Um, so as you can see, it's just an average of the values that were after it kind of got up to speed. So that's why we kind of omitted these first four is because 83, 95, 49, 75 are all kind of not really around our ballpark. Um, we're trying to get around 100. And so the machine isn't perfect. It's not going to apply a hundred exactly the entire time. It's going to apply a little bit and then if it overcorrects, it's going to undercorrect and kind of just hover around a hundred this entire time. That's why this external load cell is um, kind of bouncing around, but an average of 105. So that's what these two values are. Um, so you're basically going to copy this method and you're going to do that for steps 2 through 15. Um, if you guys are good at copying and pasting in Excel, <clears throat> this shouldn't take you very long. Um, and what you guys are going to do 
um, is once you get all your steps done and make sure make sure that everything is referencing the correct cells and make sure everything's referencing the correct tabs because um, you don't want to just you know blindly follow and copy and paste it and then be like oh yeah that works my graph is crazy but it works um, just make sure everything is kind of set up correctly um, and you're going to get to the stress strain curve or a stress strain graph and so these five values right here are what I want you guys to find so your pre-consolidation -con pre pressure your C sub C E, your C sub R E, your C sub C and your C sub R. So <clears throat> as you can see, we have our stress. That's the average stress that the load is applying on during that part of the experiment. So that's right here, 105. And then our strain, there's an equation for the strain. So um, it takes our last deformation value divided by our initial height times 100%. So this value is our last deformation value. So step one, H25. So if we go to step one, what's H25? H25 is our last deformation value. Um, other steps are going to have much more columns. So it's going to go down to like 35 or you know 40 or something like that. So when you guys are on this stress strain part of the graph, be sure that this is referencing actually the last one. It's tempting to just drag this thing down, you know, and go like, okay, like, okay, done. Like, got it, everything should automatically fill. However, you know, step seven might not, the last one not, might not be H31 or, you know, stuff like that. Um, so be sure that you do that correctly. Um, and then same with your same with your E. So once you find your E, you're also going to graph that. Um, so your E equation is just right here. So your initial E minus your last deformation value divided by initial height times initial E plus 1. Um, so your initial E is just your K3. So K3 initial void ratio 0.81. So if that's confusing to you, then it's just right there on the data tab. Um, and then, yeah, so then you're going to fill this out and you're going to use these two graphs to find your C sub C E, your C sub R E, your C sub C and your C sub R, as well as your pre-consolidation pressure. So five values right here. Um, so this is what you guys should find. Um, these are what your graph should look like at the end. Um, <clears throat> they should have a nice smooth curve, a nice backwards, I don't know, curve, and then uh, back into the same track. So when you guys are doing this, it should automatically graph for you. Um, yeah, so you guys should get the same things that I'm getting. Um, if you guys get something different, then you guys did something wrong. Um, and I'm going to ask you guys to also email me your Excel spreadsheet so that I know you guys did it right so that you guys just didn't screen grab something and um, try to do it all. So this is what all the steps are. Um, they kind of just keep going. So these are your end graphs that you guys should do. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So I also want you guys to find... Um, your CV values according to the Casa Grande and the Taylor method. Um, so if you go back to here, um, so say like step one, so these are the two different graphs that we generate, right? So when we're trying to find our CV values for each step, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use these two different methods. And um, I actually only ask for so these are the two graphs that you guys end up with, right? You use those to calculate your C sub C, E, C sub R, E, C sub C, and C sub R. And then the two graphs that you plot for each step, you're going to use to calculate um, your CV values. So the Casagrande method and the Taylor method. So you'll have two different values for each time step. However, 
I'm not going to make you guys do this for every step. That'd be kind of cruel. So I'm only asking for seven steps. So five, six, seven, eight, 13, 14, and 15. So those are the two CV values for each step. One from the Casagrande method, one from the Taylor method. Um, and the help for that is on D2L. Um, all these... Uh, all these documents that I'm showing you are on D2L, except for the one that is completed, of course. Um, so, yeah, so let's get over and kind of explain the Casa Grande and Taylor method. So this is kind of what your graph will look like. So we'll have our deformation versus time. For So for the Casa Grande method, this one's kind of weird. Um, <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to find... <clears throat> where your top of your graph ends. So that's going to be um, that's going to be the kind of the beginning of your graph. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that time and you're going to multiply it by four. And so you're going to get your time two. And you, that time is going to be further down on your curve. And that value of the deformation, those two differences between your T1 and your T2, there's going to be a, a difference between those that you're going to kind of record. So this one says it's like 6.5 and maybe 6.4. So 6.5 to 6.4, that's a difference of 0.1. And so what we're going to do is we're going to reflect that back up into the um, above the line. So we reflect that point one back up. Um, and then we're going to do that a couple more times. So we're going to do that again for our T3. So say our T2 was 6.4, um, or that deformation for our time two is 6.4 and then T3, we get that difference. So Y, and then we reflect that back up over that R2 line. And that should match back up with the line that we just did before. And so if you do that one more time, <coughs> you have three you have three values that should all match up. And the reason that we're doing this is we're trying to find our r sub 0. And as you can see from this graph, see how it kind of still is going up, but it's going to kind of asymptotically approach that value. A lot of people say like, "Oh, we'll just take this as our r value, r not value," but actually the graph keeps going and it kind of levels out up here somewhere. So that's why we're trying to find where this graph would kind of asymptotically approach. Um, so that's our R0, so that's gonna be our U sub zero line once we do that. Um, that part is typically pretty confusing to people. Um, so if you get confused, try rewinding it and listening to it a couple more times. And if you get really confused, just call me. <clears throat> and so, now we have our U sub zero line, which is great. Um, and because the whole goal of this is we're trying to find our um, T sub 50, right? So using this equation down here, we can find our CV value. And um, we know our big T50, that's just a constant. And then our T50 is going to be whatever this value is here. So we found our R. We found our U0. Um, we can't just really eyeball our U50 from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our U100% and then kind of take the average values of those two. And that's going to be our U50. So to find our U100, we take this part of the graph that <clears throat> kind of have a, has a straight line down. And we follow it down. We draw a line, kind of a tangent line extruding off of that line. And then where the graph also curves back up, we're going to draw a tangent line from that part of the graph. And where those two lines intersect, that's going to be our U100. So that's a little bit easier to find our U100. So now we have our T100, our T0. Now we can find our T50. And we find that it's 13.6 for this example. Um, then we plug it in down here. And we find our CV value as 0.81. <clears throat> does that make sense for everyone? I hope it does. I guess I should probably shouldn't ask you guys questions. So 
this is the Taylor method. Um, so that up there was the Casa Grande method. Um, if you scroll down, this is the Taylor method. So this one's a little bit easier. This is dial reading, so deformation versus square root of time. And so what you're going to do for this one is wherever that line intersects our y-axis, that's going to be our u sub 0. Um, and our whole goal is to find our t90. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, pretty much a straight edge from this line, and we're going to draw a tangent line. And you're going to pull off any value from this line, and you're going to measure that distance to that line, so time. So say that this was 7 point, or I guess that's kind of a bad example. Um, so you take this distance here, and then you add 15%. So you're going to add 15%, you're going to find a value, and you're going to connect that value back to our u sub 0 line. Um, and where that line intersects our um, general curve, that's going to be our t90 value. So at r90, that's going to be, you know, whatever this comes out to be, so 7.25. Um, so our time at 90 is actually 7.25 squared, which is 52.6 minutes. Um, and then you plug that in down here to our value, and you find your CV values. Um, and your CV values for the two different methods should be pretty similar if they're getting way out of hand, like orders of magnitude difference, then you did something wrong and you should try it again. Um, so like I said, you're just gonna do that for steps um, five, six, seven, eight, 13, 14, and 15. So those are your two v CV values. Um, you should put those in a table in your um, lab memo and rubric. And also, I want your pre-consolidation pressure in here. I didn't have it listed here, but I do want it. Um, that's going to be your sigma p prime. Um, so those are basically the two ways. Um, this is just the general kind of lab procedure. Um, as you can see, there's an example here. Um, kind of, I would read through this and. Um, since we're not doing this in lab and I can't show you guys, normally I'd take you back and kind of explain things a little bit more. Um, but since I can't do that, um, I would read read this and kind of make sure you understand it. Um, there might be a question on the exam <clears throat> about consolidation, and you might need to be able to know how a lot of this data is collected um, and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, and then uh, let's see what else we got. So this is just kind of explain, this is a little bit of an ex explanation of what I'm expecting. Um, this is kind of just reiterating what my notes say, um, just kind of for your guys' benefit. Um, all the equations that you guys are going to need are on the notes. Um, you guys should know what your how to calculate c sub c and c sub r e. Um, I think there's equations in actually this document right here. So c sub r e, c sub c r, and stuff like that. You guys also should have those in the notes from class. Um, yeah, so that basically sums it up. Um, so what I'm expecting for the lab report, um, this should be a full lab report. It will be due April 16th, um, include a two from date location. I want your table with your C sub C E, your C sub R E, your C sub C, your C sub R. Um, also your pre-consolidation pressure. So this value here um, on your stress strain, this value right here. Um, and you guys should all know how to do that. You guys should all know how to calculate that. Um, if you're confused, you kind of do this method where you find your pre-consolidation pressure right here, um, where you draw your tangent line, you draw your biosector line, yada, yada, yada. Um, if you're confused on that, email me or talk to Kosarabi. Um, yeah, so 
And then I also want a separate table. So CV values for 5, 6, 7, 8, 13, 14, 15. Um, one from each step, so or one from each method. So you should have 14 CV values. Be sure to include all of your units with everything. Um, if you don't include units, I'll dock you. Um, contact info, list of attachments. So print out. <clears throat> I want you guys to print out your stress strain Excel sheet and then print out and plot um, for step five. So everything for step five, I want to see all of step five, all your CV value graphs um, and sample calcs as well. And um, also on your submission, I want you guys to email me your spreadsheet so that you guys have or so that I can see that you guys completed your spreadsheet. Um, a word of advice, um, I've had students do this in the past and I had to give them a big fat zero. Do not collaborate with other students on this. Um, you're welcome to work with each other, but if I see that you guys, you know, divided and conquered it and just, you know, copied each other directly, I'll just give you all a zero. Um, I had to do that a couple times and it sucks because this is a big lab report. Um, it's worth 30 points, so it's 15% of your lab grade. Um, so yeah, do your own work, um, and let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I'll be around all week. Um, and like I said, if you're having trouble submitting it on D2L, uh, let me know and I will upload this video as soon as I can. Um, and you guys are welcome to start working on it right now. Um, I'm going to start posting the other videos as well. So that way. You guys kind of have a little bit more leeway of, okay, I want to do this lab right now. I mean, they're all going to be due when they were normally going to be due. So April 16th, and then a couple weeks after that, the next one will be due. And then a week after that, the, um, the sand cone lab will be due. So don't let things pile up. Um, I hope you guys are all enjoying your working from home. Um, Hopefully you guys can get outside and enjoy the sunshine a little bit and breathe some fresh air. So <clears throat> yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks. Bye.